Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, my apologies for my sore throat. I was not prepared for the weather, so um, but hopefully you'll follow. Uh, the work that I'm going to present today is uh, has been done jointly with Rahul Lahoti, who is at UNU wider and it's titled Who Was Impacted and How? A COVID-19 Pandemic and the Long Uneven Recovery in India. So before I start with the paper itself, let me give you a sense of how the pandemic manifested itself in the country. So this graph, this picture is uh, telling us three things. Uh, the first thing can be read from your left axis, which is the COVID-19 cases reported um, between 2020 and 2021. Uh, the right axis gives us the percentage change in visitors. These are basically Google mobility numbers and we report them at two places. One uh, being retail and recreation, places of retail and recreation, and the second being places of work, uh, I mean, workplaces. And the third thing are these shaded regions that you see. So uh, the first, the shaded region uh, between March, uh, I'm sorry, February, March, no, March, April and May, I'm sorry, 2020, uh, is the lockdown phase when India introduced a nationwide lockdown. Um, um, it, was, it, was, uh, it, it was implemented in the last week of March and went on till mid-May. Thereafter, the second shaded region is the post-lockdown phase, which goes uh, till March 2021. So it starts in June 2020 and goes up till March 2021. Thereafter, you have two months of uh, the second wave, uh, which is April and May 2021. And thereafter, up till December 2021, we have what we call the post-second wave. Uh, if you look at the COVID cases, which is this red, deep red line, um, we see the let's I mean, I'll just be short. Uh, the main takeaway is that, uh, uh, well, the cases peaked uh, for the first time around September 2020, which was way after the implementation of the nationwide lockdown. The second wave, of course, was far more devastating and uh, it, the, the, the number of COVID cases and deaths went uh, through the roof. Uh, if, you concentrate, if you look at the um, Google mobility numbers, we see that, of course, everything dropped uh, and there was about, a, about uh, a close to an 80% drop in uh, footfalls in both uh, places of retail and recreation and workplaces. Thereafter, as the economy began to open up, we saw that mobility um, uh, increased. It again dropped uh, during the second wave, though the magnitude remained much lower than what was seen during the first wave. And thereafter, now uh, by December 2021, we are really back to the uh, back to normal um, uh, time periods. So this is how uh, how the economy was looking like in terms of mobility and COVID numbers uh, in India. Now, if you want to talk about the economic impact of the pandemic, it uh, it makes one way to do so is to classify it broadly into categories and we look at the employment impact and the income impact. Our paper here uh, tries to document the immediate impact of the pandemic uh, on income levels, income inequality and poverty. And we go on to track the nature of recovery, recovery all the way till December 2021. Um, Given that things may get rushed towards the end of the presentation, I would like to give you a preview of the results. We find that um, uh, incomes, per capita household incomes, were much worse affected in the urban areas as compared to their rural counterparts. We find that the poorest segments of the population in the months of April and May 2020 were the worst affected. They lost their entire income in uh, these two months. Recovery was sharp, but it has continued to remain incomplete and uneven, even till December 2021. The poorest deciles in the population recovered rapidly, while the richer deciles, they saw um, very little recovery, if at all, so they stagnated. There was a very sharp rise in both poverty and inequality during the lockdown, and it continued um, after. However, um, Till the end of our period, we find that inequality has returned to the pre-pandemic levels, uh, although poverty continues to remain elevated. Okay, um, the data set we are using is a household survey data set called the Consumer Pyramids Household Survey data set. This is collected by a private agency called the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. Uh, the data set is claimed to be nationally representative and it's high frequency panel survey data wherein every household is interviewed three times a year. Uh, in doing so, we get income, we, we get employment information for every individual 
at three points in a year. We get income information for everyone for every month. And that's what we are going to use. The household, um, uh, the survey uh, is, um, um, so, so, so the agency manages, manages to survey around 200,000 households, which is equivalent to around 900,000 individuals across the country. We are interested in household income and we'll be working with per capita household income, which is our variable of interest. We'll be talking about three income metrics. I'll go one at a time. Um, the first thing we do is a simple trend analysis wherein we are tracking the monthly income, average income, uh, over time. We do this between January 2018 and December 2021. So the axis here, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the Y axis, we have the average monthly income in constant prices, and we plot that over time for all India as well as for rural and urban sectors separately. We find that, um, of course, there was a very sharp drop in incomes uh, in the month of April 2020. Uh, please note, April 2020 is the first month, uh, first complete month of nationwide lockdown. Uh, thereafter, as the economy, also the drop in incomes was much sharper for the urban areas, which is uh, given in the red line, as against the one in the blue line, which is representative of the rural sectors. As the economy began to open up towards the end of May 2020, of course, incomes began to climb back up. Um, but if you look at this point, these, these peaks, which is January 2021, we find that even by January 2021, income levels had not gone back to the pre-pandemic level. What I mean by the pre-pandemic level is uh, essentially the levels in February 2020, which was the last um, normal month, if you will, uh, before the pandemic, before the lockdown. Now, the drop in incomes hap was again witnessed for the second time. It was much lower, much smaller in magnitude. Uh, but this drop in income came at the back of the first, um, uh, first uh, fall in income. So it wasn't that incomes dropped, recovered, and then dropped again. It was really a double whammy. And even by December 2021, incomes are almost um, back to February 2020, but not fully. So that was the trend analysis. Now, given the nature of the, the, the crisis, uh, we, th there was a lot of fluctuation on a monthly basis. On a daily basis, we are capturing the monthly uh, level here. And to kind of smooth that out, we also do the analysis at a cumulative level. For that, uh, we, uh, we split our entire time period into five. Uh, which I have defined here. So the pre-pandemic period is defined as the period between January 2019 and Feb 2020. The lockdown period is March, April, and May 2020. Post-lockdown is June 2020 up till March 2021. The second wave is April to June 2021. Post-second wave is July to December 2021. Uh, these are growth incidence curves. Uh, we do them separately for the rural and the urban sectors. I will take you through the urban sectors. They are, I mean, the takeaways are broadly the same. So what we are plotting here um, uh, is the proportionate change in average per capita household income for every percentile um, for the different periods, the periods which I mentioned right now, the five periods. So your y-axis here gives you the proportionate change in per capita income. Um, if you look at this red uh, curve, that is plotting the, the change in income in the lockdown period as compared to the pre-COVID period. And if you notice, the, um, the line looks severely regressive in nature in the sense that the poorer you were, the sharper was your drop in incomes or the change in incomes was much sharper as against your uh, pre-lockdown income or pre-COVID income. Note that this entire thing is in the negative quadrant. So the bottom 5% percentiles of households were really making, I mean, their incomes dropped 100% as compared to their pre-COVID incomes, while it was much lesser for the top percentiles, um, the 100th percentile. This is, for the, this is when we compare the lockdown period with the pre-COVID period. Now let's go forward and let's compare the post-lockdown period with the pre-COVID period. There we see that the regressive nature of the impact really kind of goes away. This is, it's given by the blue line that you see here. Nevertheless, everyone was making lower income in the uh, post-lockdown period as compared to the pre-COVID period. Then comes the second wave. And in the second wave, again, we know that incomes uh, dropped. However, so, so there was a slight regressive nature to this yellow line. I'm sorry for the color, it's not very visible. Um, it was not as bad as it was in the lockdown period, which was the first wave. And finally, 
Thank you. And finally, in the um, uh, if you look at the post-second wave and pre-COVID period, if you compare those two, uh, we find that uh, incomes continue to remain around 15 to 20 percent lower than what they were in the pre-COVID period. These are our um, uh, poverty numbers. So we do this analysis by different thresholds. I will be talking about the national minimum wage here. If I take the national minimum wage to be the poverty line, in the pre-COVID period, around 32% of the rural population and around 18% of the urban population were lying below the poverty line. Of course, things were, they, they shot up the roof uh, during the lockdown period. Um, it more than doubled or doubled in the rural areas. Um, what's noteworthy is that even in the post-second wave, which is really after about two years since the, pand since the lockdown, uh, the numbers continue to remain inflated. So it was around 32% for the rural sectors, it is still at 36%. It was 18% for the urban sectors, it is at about 24%. These are the populations lying below the poverty line. The story was a little different for income inequality because we find that while um, it really shot up uh, in the lockdown period. It was 0.44. The genie was 0.44 in pre-COVID period. It shot up to 0.51 during the lockdown period. But by the post-lockdown, post-second wave period, we find that the income levels have gone back to the pre-COVID um, levels. This is uh, in contrast to the poverty story. OK, the third thing we do is uh, that we use an event study framework to determine the impact of the pandemic on household incomes. Uh, while we control for different characteristics, we do not claim them to be causal because there was no counterfactual really to compare it with. But to get a better understanding of the economy, we uh, do the analysis for different heterogeneous groups and see how things look like. That's the equation. I'll quickly take you through it because I'm running short of time. The um, YITJ variable that you see here is uh, the uh, income, the seasonally adjusted income uh, for household I uh, in month T for group J. By group J, I mean these heterogeneous groups. So for all India, J is all India, for region, J is rural urban and so forth. Um, and the bar, the Y bar, delta J, that is essentially the average income in the month of February. So the X, the Y, uh, this this uh, uh, Y axis, the Y, the the LHS is giving me the proportionate change in income in every month uh, as against the base month, uh, which is February. We are really uh, reg regressing this on time, uh, but this is just an index time. Um, we, I can talk about it later, and we have um, uh, household fixed effects and error terms, which is clustered at the household level. Okay, so quickly, um, I want to focus on the later part, but we see that in the urban, so our y-axis is the proportionate change in income vis-a-vis -vis February. The dotted line is at February. Uh, the hot dotted vertical line is at February, so everything is vis-a-vis -vis that. We see that in the urban sectors, the drop was far more sharper as compared to the rural sector. We do this also by deciles. Uh, it's done for both rural and urban. I'll talk about urban. Uh, some quick takeaways. Again, the y-axis remains the same. But what we see is that the drop in incomes that we are seeing in, again, the month of April 2020 is beautifully monotonous in nature, which means that the poorer you were, the sharper was your drop in incomes vis-a-vis -vis your own February incomes. However, the recovery too was, um, uh, was uh, of a, it, it kind of flipped. The sharper was your drop, uh, the faster was your recovery really. Uh, and if you focus on the top decile, uh, we see that they lost about 20% of their income in um, uh, in April as compared to the February incomes. However, they kind of have stagnated. They don't really have seen much of a recovery. And we hypothesize that the reason for this is uh, coming from uh, the nature of occupations that they have been involved in. Um, so if you if you belonged to contact, if you, if you were doing jobs which were more contact intensive, they were more informal in nature, they had less, secure, uh, they had less security, we'll take the example of daily wage work, they, we know they were impacted severely during the lockdown because there was an overnight loss of jobs. However, we also know they recovered quickly as soon as the economy began to open up. Now notice, these are households, so if you think of daily wage workers, these are households which also typically populate the lower deciles. They belong to the lower segments of the population. And the lower deciles were the ones which suffered a sharp dif um, a drop and a sharp recovery. Similarly, if you think of more formal sector jobs, I'll take a minute. If you, take more if you think of formal sector jobs, there we see that um, these are these are typically households which uh, belong to the right end of the distribution or the richer, uh, uh, richer uh, segments. Uh, these deciles also saw a muted drop but a slower recovery and that's what we see for white collared workers. I'll skip over this, heterogeneous groups. There are several issues with the data set which uh, if anyone is interested I can, uh, I can talk about it. But um, I'll skip right now. 
So summing up, um, um, summing up is that I, you, you, you know the preview, so I'll stop. Thank you. I'm sorry for taking up more time. <laughs>